Well, they've always talked about their organization on the ground here in Iowa. I'm a Hillary supporter, so I was hoping she would get a little bit uh, more so far, but we don't know. It's not over yet, so maybe she'll come in strong. A group of BU students watched the Iowa caucuses with their political science professor Monday night. If the Iowa caucuses cut the ribbon for the 2016 presidential campaign, the New Hampshire primary rings the bell of attention as it is the first primary election. Going first means that you know other states look to you. Candidates that don't do well in those two states, generally their campaigns end. So it's a lot of responsibility. Uh, it's also a really big advantage for those states economically. And voters invest a lot of time and energy in candidates as well. But somebody says to their friend, "Who are you going to vote for the name of the candidate? Maybe uh, Bush or maybe Clinton. And the person replies, oh, I don't know. I've only met him or her twice. Unlike the rest of the country, New Hampshire is small. Population, 1.3 million, 94 percent of them white. So it's an unrepresentative state demographically, but it's a small state where face-to-face -face campaigning still really matters. And it is uh, a state that goes sometimes Democratic, sometimes Republican. What's tricky is that New Hampshire has a semi-open primary. Independent voters can choose to take either a Republican ballot or a Democratic ballot. After voting, they can re-register as independent. Forty percent of the New Hampshire people regard themselves as independent. But independence is very important because we don't know for sure which primary the independents will choose to vote in. And then will any people cross over? Although it's a relatively complicated game, the rules in New Hampshire have largely worked. For BUTV, I'm Chen Chen in Boston.